With the beta for Cataclysm Classic being out for a good few weeks now, and honestly me spending far too much time on there than I should, how is it really shaping up? And if you are on the fence about playing Cataclysm Classic when it goes live, should you base your decisions on the beta? For those of you that have played a lot of Cataclysm, either back in the day or using alternative means, you will know that the current state of the beta really does not represent what Cataclysm is whatsoever. So you're already probably shouting at the monitor. Of course you shouldn't base your decision on the beta because half of the things that are meant to work just don't work. But before we get into my thoughts on what is and isn't working on the beta and how much of an impact it's having, there have been a couple of interesting bits of news in the last week for us classic enjoyers. So Let's have a look at those first. So firstly, the devs have been asking for feedback on Realm Consolidation, and it surprises me that this isn't just a clear-cut decision with almost overwhelming positive feedback from the community, from you, from me. I was shocked that there's actually people that don't want this. I would have assumed that, of course, this is what we want, balanced servers, seeing both factions running around, and it will just make the game better overall. That's the camp that I sit in, but I was actually really surprised that there's more people than I expected wanting the exact opposite. They like the one-sided servers. I've got to be honest here, I don't really understand the mentality behind it and never will because at that point we might as well take a huge leap towards retail and remove faction identity completely and just have everything cross-faction. I mean, cross-faction guilds, cross-faction dungeons, raids, like literally everything. Because if you are new to the game and you've got no idea on what Ironforge Pro is or where to find out how balanced each server is, you're going to have a really bad time because you're going to join the game looking forward to reliving Cataclysm again, create yourself an alliance, and then find out you're on a predominantly horde-populated server and likely end up quitting because you can't get dungeon groups, you can't raid, you know, there's barely any guilds doing anything or you're then faced with having to pay to maybe transfer off of course it's not what i want to see i don't want to see cross-faction everything i'd just rather see server merges and blizzard trying to balance the servers at least a little bit but like i said surprisingly that could be an unpopular opinion this is a post from tom ellis where he's actually talking about it and he used fairlina and benediction as an example saying they're basically fake pvp realms they are PvP realms, but they're 99% one faction each, one for Horde, one for Alliance, and almost equal in player size. So actually trying to clash those realms together to make one really big balanced PvP server, in my opinion, would be a really good thing. But I actually think people don't join these servers because they want a PvP server. They join these servers because they want a mega populated server for their faction, and well, that's where the problem is. I think having one-sided servers on PvE servers is absolutely fine, but completely butchering PvP content in the outside world kind of sucks a little bit. Personally, I'd even like to see some of the smaller PvE servers get merged together as well, because there's currently so many servers that are like practically empty, or there's a few hundred people playing. Make these feel more alive by putting a few of these servers all together, cutting down on the amount of servers there are, so when someone new joins the game, they've got more of a chance of actually ending up on a really good server in the first place so i definitely think they should do something and then the next bit of news was the raft classic pvp season 8 is ending soon to be precise it's ending on april the 15th with server maintenance now they've said please note that arena points will be converted to honor when patch 4.4 releases patch 4.4 is going to be the cataclysm pre-patch and this kind of took me by surprise because judging by the beta at the moment i would have said the pre-patch is absolutely miles off but normally it don't take long after the season goes offline before whatever's next comes so if it was a new phase bringing new content it's normally about a week of off-season pvp before that phase launches with a pre-patch it would be the same about a week i do think this time it's going to be slightly longer maybe two weeks of off-season pvp before we get the first section of the pre-patch and when i say first section of the pre-patch we should get the pre-patch in in two we should get the systems changes then we should get the shattering of the world which then brings everything else in which would last a couple of weeks before then we can actually start leveling to 85. now i am going to be putting out more than likely tomorrow a video talking about the pre-patch and exactly what you should expect in each small mini patch of the pre-patch if that makes sense so make sure you hit that subscribe button like the video while you're down there as well and be sure to check it out also i should really mention rested xp as well because if you plan on getting to 85 really really fast this is tried and tested by me now personally on the beta the rested xp guide is definitely worth picking up of course it's an affiliate link so any guide 
you buy do go towards supporting the channel but i'll put a link in the description in the pinned comment if you want to pick up the fastest way to level in cataclysm but anyway with that being said april the 15th it looks like the pvp season's coming to an end i personally still think it will be early may probably first week of may before we actually see the first section of the pre-patch but if we went historically all evidence would actually point to it being towards the end of april and then just really quickly a few thoughts about the beta and how close are we to actually having a finished product one that's ready to launch well we don't know how much progress blizzard have been making behind the scenes because some of these bugs that have existed since the day the servers went live such as losing mangle when you log out or you dc as a feral druid your key talent going missing when you respec master is not working block not working for paladins and warriors the list goes on all of these things have been broken since the day the beta went live and we've had multiple hot fixes since then bringing even extra content such as now being able to get to level 85 and do heroics but i have a sneaky suspicion they've probably got a really big patch that they're getting ready to deploy which is going to cover all of this stuff because currently a lot of the things that are going to come with the second part of the pre-patch are not even testable at the moment we still don't know how the guild system's going to work because whilst we know how it worked originally they did say at blizzcon they're going to make some changes so smaller guilds can level and not feel at as much of a disadvantage versus mass inviting ridiculous amounts of people and having a huge guild we also have no idea how the accelerated leveling system is going to work between 60 and 80 which again they told us that blizzcon is going to be a thing i know we all pretty much think that it's going to be along the lines of joyous journeys but we still haven't seen that in action. Random Dungeon Finder hasn't been working at all since day one, so we have no idea how that's functioning, and we wouldn't really get a good idea of how it's functioning without it actually being live anyway, because if you don't know, Random Dungeon Finder did go through quite a few changes, and the main changes was to try and make the groups more balanced. Now, we may even be using that type of Dungeon Finder at the moment. It would be very difficult to tell, but because of the armor specialization where cloth wearers want to wear cloth, leather wearers want to wear leather, it tries to make make sure that you're not getting a group of three cloth wearers obviously if there's nobody else queued you're going to be unlucky that's what you're going to get but ideally it's going to take that whole pool of players and just have a much smarter algorithm when it comes to forming groups and also it will prioritize people who are queued on your server i didn't even plan on talking about that in this video it's just while we're talking about things that are not quite working on the beta that sprung to mind now the big deal is the classes now i've done a ton on the beta over the last few weeks i'm level 85 on a mage i'm currently level in a paladin i've maxed mining i've maxed herbin i've nearly maxed tailoring i'm not far off maxed engineering so I've been doing a little bit of everything. Now, the problem is, if you don't really pay too much attention to what your class is doing, you might think that it's functioning normal. But I, for one, know mastery is not working for 99% of the classes. Like I said earlier, block's not working for paladins and warriors. And even dots are not working correctly either. And there's lots of talents that are doing absolutely nothing. An example would be as a fire mage, when I use fire blast, it should spread my fire dots. That's not working. So it's absolutely impossible to get a real picture of how difficult the heroics are going to be because I've been doing the heroics and honestly, outside of the bugged bosses, they're, they're really easy. But that's because they're not really meant to be tested at the moment. The whole emphasis is on level 80 to 85. So if you're on the beta and currently doing loads of heroics and thinking, wow, this is not as hard as people said, or maybe you think it seems harder than people said. Well, that's because you're probably doing significantly less damage than you should due to your class being bugged, and most of the bosses are missing ridiculous amounts of mechanics. And it's quite funny because some of the harder bosses are just loot pinatas with absolutely no mechanics working whatsoever, and then some of the easier bosses, their mechanics are working, but you're not actually getting the warning of what's going to come. That's probably a bit of a difficult one to try and picture, but Stonecore, for example, the big worm. I died to it over and over again, had to make a clip of my death to actually go back with the stream. I stream on kick, by the way, Scotty J on kick, if you want to come and join in, in the fun, just to see if there was any warning whatsoever. And actually, if you watch here, you can just about see four little lights or four little dust particles. Now, obviously, that's not how it should work. You should literally get a nice big rumbling warning type thing, you know, where you can see where the worm's going to come out so you can get out of the way. So things like this, where you think, oh, this is just not working. Without the aid of lots of people watching and actually saying, no, look, they screenshotted and sent it to me and said, this is what's happening. I'd have never have seen it. So there's lots of things that are not working how they should. So take them with a pinch of salt. Now, here's the funny thing. With all that said, all the things that are bugged, all the things that are not working properly, I am still having an absolute blast. And I don't think that comes as any surprise to anyone who's watched me for any length of time, because you know, I cannot wait for Cataclysm or Mop or Bod. Like, you know, I want to play through with my same characters for 
a good few more years yet. But overall, if we want to take something really positive away from the beta, yes, there are a few bugged quests which can get quite annoying, but I have done nearly every zone. So multiple characters from 1 to 60, making sure I chose different zones during my leveling path. I've done every zone in Northrend, every zone in Outland. I haven't touched Vashir, but that's because I hate it. But overall, Blizzard haven't got that much to do to get the level 1 to 85 working absolutely perfect. A few bug quests, get those fixed, and the experience is going to be amazing. Next, we need to be moving on to the dungeons, the heroics, the raids. But on the basis that pre-patch could last anywhere from four to six weeks, there's still plenty of time. So that's just my thoughts on the news that's come out this week and the state of the beta as we stand today. So be sure to like, subscribe, check Rested XP out in the pinned comment. And also, if you're planning on quest stacking, I don't know if I should really be saying this at the moment, but Rested XP are actually working on a pre-quest guide for Cataclysm where you'll get from 80 to 81 literally the day of launch. Well, you'd get to 81 the day of launch anyway, but you know what I mean. Run round, hand questing, boom, you're level 81. So I'll let you know when that's available as well. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.